happening to what you've called us to we say yes lord yes lord stepping outside of who we're used to the lord my father's house church i'm hoping and praying that you guys are having a good day i pray that you guys enjoy this worship and worship with us exalt his name together in jesus name here we go Yes, Jesus. We need your spirit, God. Pour out on us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here we go. We need your spirit. Pouring out on us, oh God. We need revival. Stirring up, oh God. We just want you.
desperate for you, Jesus. Hungry for you, Jesus. At this time, church, I want to really encourage you. Just begin to cry out the name of Jesus. You know, during the circumstances, there's a lot of people that are going through different seasons. There's people that are going through good seasons. There's also people that are going through bad seasons. Whether it's good or bad, you should still, still seek the presence of God. I know sometimes it's hard when it's a bad season, but I really encourage you. Just begin to say, Jesus, take me, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Take me, Jesus. No matter what circumstances comes my way, God, I need you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. Use me, Father. Use me, Jesus. Jesus, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. So take
I just want you. I just need you, Jesus. Just by you making that pact with him, you're going to see that there's going to be a huge, huge difference in your life. Gradually, you're going to start seeing God moving in your life. And the enemy, don't get me wrong, the enemy is going to try and try to stir you away from what God has intended for you. But you see, we're all children of God. The bigger the hardship, the bigger the storm, the bigger the season, there's going to be a bigger blessing for you. I declare it in the name of Jesus. We just want you, Jesus. We just need you, God. Thank you, Jesus. So at this time, I just want to say thank you once again. Thank you for always being committed and viewing by Father's House Church. We are always praying for you. We hope you're praying for us. And if you have time on Sundays, we have a parking lot service at 11 a.m., you're more than welcome to come, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring anyone. You know, we're all a church family. Like I always say, if you've seen us once or twice, you're already part of my Father's House church family. So we thank you once again. Enjoy your day, and God bless you. Have a good day. Praise the Lord, everybody. Paz de Cristo. We greet everybody in Jesus' name. Los hermanos de español, yo los bendiga. Our English department, God bless all of you. And uh, we want to thank our pastor, Philemon Anaya for giving us this opportunity to be able to preach God's word. Uh, we want to get right into the word of God, and we ask in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would help us and guide us in, in this message and that it would reach somebody, Lord God. So we just give the Lord all the honor and the glory. I'd like to read um, some scriptures. I like to read a lot of scriptures uh, so that way you know that it's not coming from me, but it's coming from the word of God. Today's topic, uh, theme, is basically get out. Get out. And we'll, ex we'll explain that. Once again, we've been talking about everything that's, that's been happening in this world. Um, you know, it's not all negative, but there is a lot of negative things that, 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 are help, that are happening. And so we want to explain four things to you uh, today, and we hope that you would put them in your heart and that you would be able to understand what God is, is trying to explain to us through the, through the scriptures. So get out. Get out. We are custom right now that we are back in our churches or in a parking lot. Uh, some people are at, uh, you know, if it's 75%, uh, 50%, 25% to be in, in their buildings. And, and there are churches that are outside and they're doing parking lot services as we have chosen to do and I've been dealing with this message and at the end of this uh, sermonette uh, you know I will explain how I received this but I truly believe that right now it's our time to get out of our buildings and reach the lost and I would like to read Jeremiah. I'd like to read Jeremiah. If you would just be patient with me. I'd like to read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 and on. As you have your Bibles there. The book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 says, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you... A prophet to the nations. This is the call to Jeremiah as a prophet. And going on in verse 6 and on. But I protested, oh no, Lord God, look, I don't know how to speak since I am only a youth. 
as we go on. Then the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of anyone, for I will be with you to rescue you. This is the Lord's declaration. Praise God. And as we go on, it says, Then the Lord reached out his hand, touched my mouth, and told me, I have now filled your mouth with my words. See, I have appointed you today. I want you to think about that as we're sitting in our house or wherever you are at today with everything that is happening. See, I've appointed you today over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and demolish and to build and to plant. Praise God. Verse 14. Then the Lord said to me, disaster will be poured out from the north on all who live in the land. 15, indeed, I am about to summon all the clans and kingdoms of the north. This is the Lord's declaration. They will come and each king will set up his throne at the entrance to Jerusalem's gates. They will attack all her surrounding walls and all of the cities of Ju Judah. Verse 16, I will pronounce my judgments against them for all the evil they did when they abandoned me to burn incense to other gods and to worship the works of their own hands. 17, now get ready. Here we go. Get ready. Stand up and tell them everything that I command you. Do not be intimidated by them or I will cause you to cower before them. Verse 16, today, today I am the one who has made you a fortified city, an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests and the population. And the last verse 19, they will fight against you, but never prevail over you. Since I am with you to rescue you, this is the Lord's declaration. The Lord was with the prophet Jeremiah. Something was about to happen and he already instructed him to let him know what he must do. For all those that were coming, the Lord gave them instruction. Do not fear. The Lord God is with you. So here we are right now in this realm, in this place. With everything that is happening right now, get out. We want to go into our churches, into our temples. We want to come, and I'm all for that. We want to worship God. We want to raise our hands. We want to dance. We want to run. We want to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. We want to do that. I have nothing wrong with that. But God has called us to go out. Get out of your dwelling. We need to go out there. We're in the four wall syndrome. We're in this place. It is a building. Let us look at the definition of that. Dwelling. What is a dwelling? A building or place of shelter to live in. What is a church? A building for public Christian worship. This is a building. Well, this is where we get the Holy Ghost. This is where we speak in tongues. This is where we feel the presence of God. You can feel the presence of God. You can dance. You can shout. You can run when you're outside. Not just in the church, but outside of the church, you can do the same thing. We can't have that concept. I believe that the devil has placed a trap or, being, or telling us that, you know what, you go ahead and go into the church. Go ahead and worship your God. Go ahead and dance and go ahead and shout. Because he doesn't want us out there. He doesn't want us to be out there dwelling, 
What is a dwelling? It is a building. It is a place. You can feel God not only in the church. You can feel God in your home. You can feel God in your car. You can feel God at your work. You can feel God when you're running. You can feel God when you're at a restaurant. You can feel God everywhere that you go, not just a building. And we see what's going on right now as the governor is saying that, well, he recommends that, you know, not to sing and not to chant. Where are we going? We need to be out there. We need to get out. Yes, with precaution. No one's saying that to get careless and, and, and don't wear the mask and, and don't disinfect. We're not saying that. But God has called us. God has called us to get out there and help them and encourage them and bring them to God, not to the church, to bring them to the word of God. And so there is an example here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, and they were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And what did Jesus say? Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. And the same thing happened as you go down with James and John. They were in their boat and Jesus calls them as well and they get out of the boat and go with Jesus. Who's following who? Are we following Jesus or we want Jesus to follow us? We need to follow Jesus. And these men got out of their dwelling, out of their place and followed Jesus. We need to follow Jesus. There are people that are out there that need Jesus, that need to hear a word from Jesus. We need to get out of our dwellings, out of our caves, out of our places, and we need to speak a word unto them. They tell us that we need to wear a mask. It's like the devil saying, oh, you can't talk now. You have to wear a mask. You can talk through the mask and let somebody know about Jesus. You can sanitize your hands. You can take care of yourself. But we need to get out there. People are complaining now because there might be the possibility of our churches being closed again. And what? What are we, we going to do? We still need to preach and teach the gospel, but it's out there. We can't fear, and that's the next one. First one is that we need to get out of our dwelling. God is saying, follow me, follow me. It's not just about this church, about the windows and these nice pews and everything and, and the speakers and the nice music and all that. That's not what it's about. It's about the word, the good news, to be able to share it with somebody. That is what it's about. As he called many, many to follow him. And he will guide us and he will protect us. Dwelling, we need to get out of our dwellings. Number two, fear. More than ever before, there is fear fear in the land. We don't want to go outside. We don't want to be out there because of the COVID-19 and the riots, these things that are happening right now. The devil is trying to put fear in us. Yes, stay in your churches. Yes, stay in your parking lots. But dare not to go out there to a park. Dare not to go and, and, and walk and dare not to go to a restaurant. And dare not to be out there, period. Dare not to, because you're going to get sick. Yes, we go by the guidelines. But we need to let somebody know about Jesus. And, he's, and the devil is trying to put fear. What is fear? It is doubt. It is terror. Timid. Trembling. Uh, a condition of being afraid. We don't fear anything except Jesus Christ. That's all we fear. So when we get out of our dwelling 
and we go out with the power because the Bible says this. I want to read to you 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power. What power are we talking about? Not the power of the president, the power of Jesus' name. Love and self-control. What is self-control? Regulates one's emotion, thoughts, and behavior in the face of temptations. So we, through Christ, are able to be able to control that. Through Jesus Christ. But it's the power of the name of Jesus and his, his love that we must come together and not let fear take control of us. Knowing that the devil's schemes and strategies and what he's trying to do stay in there. We're not going to stay in there. We are not going to stay in that parking lot. We're going to go reach the lost. We're going to go reach somebody and let them know about the word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 56, 3, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalms 118 Six and seven, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. Psalms 34, 4, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. That's scripture. It's explaining to us that the Lord is with us and we don't have to fear. So whatever the, the devil puts against us, we need to fight in the name of Jesus Christ. And we need to get out there and not be afraid. Yes, we are going by the guidelines Yes, we have to wear the mask. Yes, we have to wash our hands. Yes, we have to sanitize our hands. But you know what? You can still speak the word of God that's out there in a park at your job. We have to go to work. And when you go to work, you're wearing your mask. You're washing your hands. But you can let somebody know that Jesus loves them. When you go out and you walk and you wear your mask or you're just walking and you see somebody, all you need to let them know is that I just wanted you to know that Jesus loves you. The devil is a liar, and he doesn't want us to do these things. He wants us to stay in our churches and our park. Yes, go ahead and stay there, but dare not to go out there. But we need to go out there. We need to get out of the dwelling, and we need to stop fear and conquer that with the power of the name of Jesus Christ. I get upset because as, as a pastor, you see, you're the ones in the, in the front lines and you see what the enemy is trying to do to put fear in our brothers and sisters, in our families. And we look at the news and the news twisted at times. And, and oh, it's rising and this person's getting sick and that person's dying and look what it does. And there's all kinds of things that are happening and the devil is trying to put fear. But we need to conquer that in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord will be with us and help us. We will, we will defeat him in Jesus' name, dwelling and fear. We can't go backwards. Pastor was here just a minute ago saying we cannot go backwards. We need to go forward. God didn't call us to be in a building. God called us to go out there as we're going to read right now. Praise God. Number three. There is a plan, and the plan is not to run. The plan is to go forward. What is a plan? It is a layout, an outline, a purpose. That is the key right there. It's a purpose. What is the purpose? We're going to read that. The plan is to save lives. That is the plan the Bible says in Matthew 16, verse 15 and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world. It didn't say go into your temples. It said go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. 
Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. It says to go out into the whole world, everywhere, everywhere under a tree, by a sidewalk, in the wilderness, at the mall, praise God, everywhere, and proclaim the gospel, the good news. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, then he said to his disciples, get this, this is us. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. I have a garden at my house. And from my bedroom, I look out the window and see the garden. The tomatoes aren't going to come to me. The chilies aren't going to come to me. The carrots aren't going to come to me. They're going to look at me. But that's all they're going to do. They're not going to come to me. I need to go out there. I need to go to the garden and pick them. We need to go out to the community and pick them one by one and let them know that Jesus loves them. We need to reach out. We need to pray for them in Jesus' name. They're not going to come to you. We're used to them coming into our, our temples and hearing the music, but we need to go out to them. We need to share the gospel. There is a plan. The plan is to help them. The plan is to bring them to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Once again, I am not being negative that we shouldn't be in our temples. Yes, we should. We should be able to worship God, but that is not the plan. That is not the plan. Once again, I need to read this to somebody. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful. Man, there are so many people out there that need God, but the labors are few. Where are we? Where are we? What are we doing? Well, brother, we need to be safe. Yes, we need to be safe, and we need to go by the guidelines. But no one's saying that we can't speak to nobody. Nobody's saying we can't share the word of God. Therefore, pray earnestly. Yes, we need to start praying to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. We need to pray. We need to pray more than ever before, Lord God. Put a shield of protection. I was here. I got, I got here this morning to the church, and I, I was here, and a couple came by. And I told you, every police officer that I see, I'm going to intercede and I'm going to pray for them. And it's not just them. It's anybody that I see that I'm able to speak the word of God to. And they showed up to the church here. And I was talking to them and I said, would you mind if I pray for you guys? Let me just pray for you guys. And they said, sure. And the one man had a hat on. And with reverence, he took it off. And I started to pray for both of them. Lord God, put a shield a protection upon them, Lord God. This was outside the building. It wasn't inside of the building. It was outside. I didn't have my mask at the time, and I had my social distance, but I started to intercede and pray for them that we would be able to plant a seed of hope, of love upon them. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. This is the Lord who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We need to share the gospel, the truth to everyone out there. We need to get out of our dwelling. We need to stop being afraid. And there is a plan. And that plan is to go out to the harvest just like I told you, I had to go out to the garden and pick those tomatoes and chilies and carrots and squash, all of those things. I needed to go out, and they ain't coming to me. If you want it, you got to go get it. If we want these people, then we got to go get them, and we got to share to them the gospel of the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the last one, I wish I could go in depth on these, but with time not permitting, we want, we're just putting this, this uh, sermonette into you that you would understand why, why are we called? What are we doing? 
And the last one is the name of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. Let me say that again. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. What is that name? It's the name of Jesus Christ. That is the name. That is the name. The devil is the one that should have fear. Not us. When he sees us outside, he's going to tell us, what are you doing out here? You should be in your temple. You should be in your parking lots. No, devil, we're coming out here to get back what belongs to Jesus Christ. We come in the name which is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. We come in Jesus' name, and he's going to tremble at the name which is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, For God has not intended us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many people need to know about the name? We all know your name. We all know the president's name. We know our governor's name. But do you know the name which is above every name? The name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. This was the jailer, jailer with Paul and Silas when they were in the prison, and the jailer was about to kill himself. And Paul said, Wait! Don't do it. We are all here. What a tremendous, what a tremendous act of what was going on in that time. And that jailer said, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus and him in his household. They were all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. All of them were baptized because of what he saw. And he wanted to know what is the name. How are people going to know if we are in our dwellings and we are afraid? We can preach on YouTube. We can come to our sanctuaries and our parking lots. But we need to go to the parks we need to walk. We need to go to our jobs. We need to go to places that we're not accustomed to with those guidelines, but most of all, with the word of God and with the name of Jesus Christ and to share this gospel in this time of fear and let somebody know you don't have to be afraid for the Lord God is with us just like he was with Jeremiah he is with us as well don't be afraid you're a fortified city you have walls you are protected what is going to come against us the Lord God is with us praise God the Lord is with us. In Acts chapter 16, verse 18, it says, she continued. This was, this was with Paul when they were just minding their own business, praying. And this slave girl came upon them. And it wasn't her. It was the demon that was in her. She continued this many days. She was there. Oh, these are, these are men of the most high. They're proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. And you could just hear the tone, oh, these are the men. And, and just that annoying voice, praise God. Eventually, Paul grew so aggravated that he turned and said to the spirit, 
not the girl. He said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And the spirit left her at that very moment. Why? Because there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what comes against you. All you need to know is that Jesus is with you. And when you use the name of Jesus Christ, anything that is negative that comes before you must leave because there is power in that name of Jesus. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 19, you believe that God is one? Good. Even the demons believe and they tremble. The demons tremble at the name. What's the name? The name of Jesus Christ, praise God. Even the devil himself trembles at the name of Jesus Christ. There was a woman that was walking and she had her purse and somebody came to uh, take away her purse and we know for what, to take the money and, every, and all the belongings. All of a sudden, this man started to run away and the woman, well, instead of going the opposite way of the man, and sometimes that's what we intend, that we're gonna run, but we shouldn't run. We should go forward. You know what she did? She went after the man. And as she was running and the man got more scared and probably thinking, what the heck is this lady doing? And the lady kept running after the man, not running. We need to go running towards them, praise God. We need to go out there. And she was running and running and running. And finally the man slipped and he fell down and he kept saying out of fear, Get away from me. Leave me alone. And the woman saying, why did you run? Why are you running? Just leave me. Get out of here. Tell me first why you ran. Because I saw two great men in white on each side of you. I'm here to let you know that there is power in the name of Jesus. The angels were protecting her. Why? Because she had faith in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the same with us. When we get out of our dwelling and we are not afraid and we know what the plan is, when we go out there, the angels of the Lord camp around those that fear the Lord. God is with us. He is protecting us, praise God. The Lord Jesus is with us. I'm encouraging you here today that you go speak to somebody through your mask or without your mask. Open your mouth because the Lord has anointed your mouth to be able to speak a word through Jesus Christ and let them know what God wants them to know. Hallelujah. Get out. Get out. Get out. Don't be cussing. Don't complain. And don't complain if for some reason they shut the church down again. We are the temple. Let me read that to you one more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. 16, what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are a temple of the living God. Even as God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they will be my people. You are the temple. You take yourself out there and start preaching and teaching and loving somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll finish with this. And that's why I preach this here today. The Lord gave me a dream that I was at work and I had a plan. There was already a plan and set and I needed to follow that plan. And I was following that plan. And this big giant man was there. About six foot six, look almost seven feet tall. And he kept murmuring. Uh, 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 and he kept bothering me. Uh, 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 and I was just, and I just was going by the plan, trying to put fear because he was tall. Big man. Here I am, little short guy, five, seven. I won't tell you how much I weigh, praise God. But I'll, hear, I'll, I'll tell you here, this guy was huge. But I was focused. There was a plan. And I was out there. So all of a sudden, I'm moving around, and there were people watching. There were people around watching, English-speaking people watching me. And just like Paul, 
got aggravated and said, you know what, this is enough. This is enough. And I said the same thing. I don't know why I said it, but I said it in Spanish. And everybody that was around me were English. But as that man was facing me and just bothered me, I turned around and I looked at him and I said, in the nombre de Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And that man fell to his knees. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, I said it again, in the nombre de Jesus. In the na- and all of a sudden, he backed out some more. And he kept going back. And I kept saying, in the nombre de Jesus. And he kept going back. That is the authority that we have. We have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot be afraid. There is a plan, and we must follow the plan. We need to go out to the harvest. So, I leave you with that. That I'm not here to discourage you in any way or put our churches down. I am here to let you know that we need to go out there and we need to battle and let the devil know that we are not afraid of COVID-19. We are not afraid of the protesting. We come in peace. We come in the name of Jesus Christ, and we come to share the gospel to somebody that's out there that will accept it or at least plant the seed. And one day you shall see them come. So I encourage you today, let us get out And let us do something in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you and we thank you for hearing this. My prayer is that God keep you all safe and take care of you and your families. Brothers and sisters, let us not be afraid. There is a plan. He has called us from the wound. Let us go out and let us share this beautiful gospel that is alive. God bless you. I hear the voice of